Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise and thanksgiving, Hallelujah. Now, yesterday, as I read in the book of Colossians, I wanted to share with you a passage that again spoke to me very deeply. We see in chapter 1, in verse 9, it says, For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord Jesus unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness, praise God, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Then in chapter 2, verse 6 and 7, it says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And no more greater passage could we read on this day that is celebrated here in America as the day of thanksgiving. But it is my prayer, friend, that every day will be a day of thanksgiving and rejoicing from your hearts to the great God that we serve. Well, we're continuing our study in the book of Hebrews, and today we are in chapter 8. And the writer begins by saying, Now, of the things which we have spoken up until this point, for us, the last seven chapters of this great book. He says, this is the sum. We have a high priest. He is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. He is a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. And the true tabernacle would be his people, which the Lord has pitched, the Lord has built, and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man, Jesus, has somewhat also to offer. In verse 6 it says, He has obtained a more excellent ministry, more excellent than that of the earthly priests, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. In verse 9, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind. They weren't in the minds of the people at one time. They were upon stone. But he says, I will put them in their mind. I will write them in their hearts. I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Friends, there are those that would consider themselves atheists, but there really is no such thing. The law of God is written upon the hearts of all men. And if the law is there, then the knowledge of the God who placed the law is there. But in their refusal to accept his laws and to live according to his standards, they deny him thereby searing their own conscience so that they can live their lives unto their own choices without any conviction. And this is why they deny him. By denying him and his presence, they deny that there is any such law to live by. But when the day of opportunity comes for them, if they will surrender to his will and deny themselves, he says in verse 12, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. I will shower them with grace 
and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. For a new covenant has come, the first being made old. Friends, aren't you thankful that he has written his law upon your hearts? That you no longer serve yourselves, but you serve a new king? Aren't you thankful that he has shown to you mercy and grace? And that he no longer remembers your sins, your iniquities, your failures, your mistakes? And aren't you most of all thankful that it is through Jesus and his initial sacrifice, his once and for all sacrifice, and that as it tells us in chapter 10, verse 10, that it is through Jesus we are sanctified through the offering of his body once and for all. On this day, friends, there are many things that we can be thankful for. Family, friends, freedom, good health, the material blessings that he has bestowed upon us, even and especially his spirit who lives within us, his written word that we have to read and to study. But none of this would have been possible, friends, had it not been for the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus, who died for sinners, such wretched men and women like you and I. And so in all that you give thanks for today, friends, simply bow your head for a moment and thank the Father for Jesus, for the life that he lived, for the example that he left us, for the death that he died, and for the eternal life that he bestows, if only we will surrender to his will and live according to his commandments and to his laws. Well, friends, I pray your day today will be blessed as you surround yourself with friends and family, that your conversation will be Christ-centered, and you will rejoice in the things that he has done for you and that you might be able to speak a word of hope into a life who is yet to come to know the road of grace. Now, as the Lord Jesus wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. Have a great day of Thanksgiving, and I'll see you on the next video.